consists of oversized books. Uh, we have some real old ones in here. I was just looking at this old book on who's who in California, and it came out in the 30s, 1930s, 40s, and 50s. In this room, uh, we have some very important books. Uh, for instance, over on this wall, we have theater art books. We have a bunch of poetry books. Uh, for instance, um, Arne Bontem, we have Langston Hughes, we have Paul Marsh Dunbar, we have everybody, Claude McKay, uh, so many people that wrote poetry. We keep those books in this room. We also have a children's section over here, and we have some wonderful children's books and some of the old fables, uh, stories. This is a book about Sojourner Truth. It's a narrative. This is an autobiography that she wrote herself. And uh, Sojourner Truth was a lady that helped to get the slaves out of uh, slavery. And she would have an uh, underground railroad and have a place for them to hide until they had reached freedom. And she did that with so many slaves was able to help them. But this is a book all about her life and this is her narrative. So I think this is a very historical piece uh, in this collection. This book came out in 1875, and we have many books of that nature here that came out many, many years ago, which will give you the history of some of the people that helped us to escape from slavery, and they helped us to do a lot of things that we're doing today historically. This is Paul Boyce Dunbar, uh, Port during the Renaissance, Harlem Renaissance period. Uh, he wrote along with Langston Hughes and Arne Buntemp and Claude McKay. All of those people wrote poetry. And his poetry was put into this book form in first editions only. Uh, Barbara Armstrong did the decoration in the book and there was a uh, Hampton Camera Club took the photographs, and Paul Lawrence Dunbar wrote all the verses, which were written in dialect, uh, which is kind of hard to read sometimes. <laughs> but anyway, uh, it's a wonderful verses in here. And this is a beautiful book. Oscar Michelle was one of the most uh, outstanding filmmakers during the 20s, 30s, and 40s. It's a receipt for a handwritten slave document, and it was written in 1836, and it's for the sale of a 17-year-old girl by the name of Ellen. And uh, she sold at that time for $1,000. It's an amazing document. This is an inventory from the Romney Plantation taken in January 1st of 1790. Now, what this document is, it's the inventories, the slave holdings of the plantation. They haven't broken down into job categories. They have cooks and watchmen, field workers, house workers. But the largest job category is that of breeding women. Oh, On the plantation, goodness. they had 62 breeding women. This was the source of but revenue the, at the time. W.C. Handy was a very famous music composer. He composed the St. Louis Blues. And it's a lot of his songs that's in this particular book, uh, books that he, com I mean, songs that he composed himself. Phyllis Wheatley was uh, brought to this country from Africa as a slave. Langston Hughes. Yes, he was a very good friend of mine. The Big C. Yeah. Wow. It's published in 1826. Uh -huh. And, and it's called The Negro's Complaint, and it's a poem. Uh, actually, it's, it's The Negro's Complaint, a poem to which is added. Pity for Poor Africans. Now, with your William background Crowell. as a librarian, uh, does that help you to keep things in order there at the at the research center? Well, you know, when you have a space, you can keep things in order, but uh, our space is very limited, so we have to do the best we can with what space we have. Hopefully, one of these days, we'll have a real nice, big building where we can put everything in there, even the films and. We want to have uh, a music room and 
uh, room for the photographs, uh, uh, computer rooms. We just want to have the whole gamut right all under one place where people won't have to go to library to library to library to find what they're looking for.